Welcome to today's performance in the Johnson County Community College Polsky Theater. This Rule Joyce recital features some of the Kansas City area's most accomplished musicians. Quartet Le Monde is led by violinist Chiafe Lin, who is currently the Kansas City Symphony's assistant concert master. She is joined by violinist Philip Lazowski, violist Matthew Sino, who is the acting principal violist, and cellist Susie Young, the associate principal cellist. Their recital is supported by the Martha Lee Kane Tranby Music Endowment Fund. Hello, and thank you all for joining us. We are so excited to be here today and thrilled to share this incredible music with you. The first piece on our program will be Mendelssohn's String Quartet, Opus 13, Number 2, in A minor. Mendelssohn finished writing this piece when he was just 18 years old. And while that is quite young, just a teenager, he had already accomplished a great deal as a composer, including two masterpieces, his Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream Overture, as well as his octet for string. So this was really his first attempt at writing a string quartet. And it's interesting because it actually embodies a much greater depth of emotion than you've seen in his previous works. I think it's interesting to note that he, um, he finished in 1827, and it was just a few months after the passing of Beethoven. So Beethoven was, and still is considered, I guess you could say, the, the master of quartet writing. And it's very clear that he had a huge influence on Mendelssohn. And it's uh, especially evident in this quartet. The first movement opens with a warm and luscious adagio. Yet there is a quick turn of events with a flurry of 16th notes that leads us into a much more agitated and anxious allegro. The second movement, uh, much like the first, begins with this calm um, adagio, yet there's a fugal theme that seemingly appears from nowhere. And this leads us to a more rhythmic and passionate middle section. The third movement is also a three-part structure, and the middle movement is particularly interesting because, well, middle section rather, is interesting because it's quite reminiscent of Mendelssohn's uh, Midsummer Night Dream, where the music is light and whimsical and almost brings the listener to a fairy-like world, if you will. The final movement uh, begins in a very dramatic fashion with stormy tremolo in the lower three strings and an operatic recitative from the first violin. The overall feel for the movement is quite um, unsettling and restless, much like that of the first movement. But eventually it subsides and we are brought back to the adagio, which you had previously heard about 30 minutes prior in the opening of the first movement. Yet this time it seems to be even more beautiful, tender, and distant. I think when talking about Mendelssohn and his quartet writing, he is oftentimes um, underrated, especially in compared to his predecessor, Beethoven. And, you know, Beethoven, his, his late works, his late quartets were very monumental, but I really feel that Mendelssohn's A minor string quartet can live up to those. So we had a blast putting this together, and we really hope you enjoy. Thank you.
Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much again for watching our performance. Is it on? Oh, sorry. Um, the, the last two pieces we are going to play for you are actually two movements from two different quartets. The first one we will play for you is the second movement of Mozart's string quartet in F major, Kursal 590. And so this is uh, part of a three, um, three quartets, Kursal 575, 589, and the one we're about to play for you. And they were called the Prussian string quartets because he really wanted to impress uh, the, the Prussian king, Friedrich Wilhelm II. And nobody actually knows if he ever met him, but he was writing this for him. And so this second movement is sort of written in a Sicilian dance, which is kind of a pastoral dance. And you will hear the gentle lilt of the dance. And it starts out in, in a very simple melody, everyone playing the same rhythmic and melodic line. And then it will go on and embellish that theme and also like small variations, which I think is really nice. And um, we kind of talked about it and we said it was sort of like a heavenly dance. And then the last piece in sharp contrast will be from a Beethoven string quartet, his quartet Opus 59, number three in C major. And this is part of his middle quartets, also called Razumovsky quartets because they were commissioned by Count Razumovsky, um, who was a Russian ambassador in Vienna. And so this last movement is pretty crazy. Um, it basically starts off with our violist, and he sets the pace for a wild, wild ride. And it basically never ends. And all the voices come in, and we just kind of go crazy and, and end it. And we thought it would be appropriate to end with Beethoven, because um, it's also his 250th birthday anniversary this year. So I hope you enjoy. And we're really happy to be here. And thank you so much for supporting the Rural Joy series. Thanks.